Now I'd like to talk about a few things that can cause you to get some bad measurements. Those we don't need. Okay, first of all, uh, one of our wonderful customers uh, told us that he was in the midst of digitizing a whole job, had to go outside and take a cell phone call. Came back in, finished the job, didn't look quite right, and after he cut some scrap, realized that something happened in the middle. Now, on our tripod here, if anything kicks this, that movement, this is zero, zero on the drawing. That can't happen, okay? So, uh, you will know if you kick the tripod. If you, if you didn't, maybe someone else did in the interim if they were in the room. So what his suggestion was to put a little post-it note on the wall, and he hits our simple cross. It's one point, one point on the drawing right here. Then he digitizes his whole top, then comes back, and at the end hits a second cross in the exact same spot. Now, after zooming in on the two crosses, eventually they will become apart, and you can distance that. And if it says zero, it's less than ten thousandths of an inch. Um, in his case, he said, uh, uh, with the ability to hit the same dot in the same place in a ten or fifteen or twenty thousandths worth of laser variance, uh, he was totally happy if he was less than a sixteenth on those two measurements. It would be the first measurement of the drawing and the absolute last measurement of the drawing. So now. We're going to show you how to do that, and we're going to also show you how to autofill it and scribe a wall. And then we're going to get into some other things that could cause some uh, bad measurements. And, and again, that's something once you know how to do that, you won't do it wrong. Let's uh, draw a manual cross here. And I'm going to hit this little circle that I made on this post it note on the wall. Remember here, we have the micro adjust here that can, you can use to adjust specific points. I have one cross there. Now I'm going to switch over to line mode and auto fill it. Coming back down, I hit my first point here. My second point will be there. My third point around the corner here, there. Notice I pulled the drawer out so I wouldn't have a reflection there. There. Moving along, I need two points on this long base unit here. Now I need to raise the laser. I'm going to raise it high enough so that I will be able to go over the splash. Okay, two more points here. Be careful not to get too close to the corner for reflection. Now, on the auto fillet, I'm going to change it to open. That means I'm not connecting this. Now I will start a new line, and on the back wall I will scribe. Scribing here in this case, I'm going to shoot about every stud along the wall. Generally, our belief is that studs, I mean, the drywall is are typically straight pieces of material. It's the, it's the studs that bend them around and change them. Now when I get near the corner here, I'm going to stop about three inches out of the corner to avoid that type of reflection you see there. So I hit a point here, then I'm going to put one right in the corner. And then another three inches or so out of the corner. And then approximately every stud here. Except in this case we have a microwave that I don't want to move. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is fill it in the corners. So I fill it with a sharp corner here and there, there and there. I'm also going to rotate the drawing at this point. Um, to make it nice and straight. Now the first thing I want you to see is what this corner looks like when we zoom in on it. So let's zoom in on this corner. Notice here, and we'll get a little bit tighter. This is what a drywall corner mud looks like. That mud comes out, it's built up into the corner, and goes back this way. If this was CNC, or even cut manually to match this off a plotter, it would fit like a glove. Now we're going to switch to the arc mode. 
In this particular case, we're going to draw a manual bump from that point there. Then we're going to come over here. I need to raise it up a little bit to catch this target. I position the target in the middle of where the sink will be. The second point there. And over here, where the third point will be, right there. Beautiful sloping arc. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is show you how to do a three-point circle. We have a tube here that we're going to simulate as a column. The next thing we're going to do is draw and change the arc mode to a circle mode. This prompts me to say that I want either three points or one point. In this case, I want three, so I say OK. I turn the laser on, and I hit three points. Just spread them out evenly. One, two, three. And as you can see, there's my circle. Now, we're to continue by finishing by hitting the second cross in the same position. So I change my draw mode to cross. I come over here and as best as possible I want to hit the same dot. Um, most people will say if you hit that dot in the same spot, and you can see here it looks almost identical on the screen. But most people say if you hit the same dot within a sixteenth of an inch at this time because we have a variance in the way we do that, we'll be fine. Now. Let's zoom in on this dot. Notice it still looks like one dot. Still. Okay, now we've got them separated enough where we can measure them. So let's check the distance between the first dot and the second dot. Forty thousandths of an inch, or one sixteenth of an inch. It's actually less than that. That's fine. In this case, we know that everything we did from the first measurement to the last measurement were within 40 thousandths of an inch. And I would be very happy to leave at this point and know that my drawing was perfect. Many fabricators would be concerned about how tight this would be in a scribe situation. So what we're going to show you is another method to actually, uh, and it would speed up production, especially if this job was to receive two splashes on the back wall that wall and this wall. What we're going to do is we're going to hit a point on that wall right up at the front and instead of hitting in the corner we're going to bring it back about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch. It goes almost as much as three quarters if we're using three quarter inch splash material. Then over here we're going to hit a point three quarters of an inch from that wall and then back to the front. What this will set up is a trapezoidal situation so we're not going to chew up drywall coming into this big U. This would be more common in a three-wall vanity situation where uh, it would be just fast production. We don't have to cut little ears on the edge. We can make beautiful fast saw cuts, which would eliminate uh, a lot of the time in production. Okay, so let's do that now. All right, I've switched my mode over to red. I'm going to start out here wherever I want it to be tight and hit one point. Now. Instead of coming in that corner, I'm going to come out of the corner about a half inch. Notice I put a black fuzzy thing up there. That eliminates any reflection because I have, to, in this case, to shoot close to the wall. See the reflection there? Let's move that a little black piece over here. There's actually two of these with the kit. but Okay, now we capture our third point at this corner. Next, we bring it out to where we would have a tight fit on this edge. Okay, let's pay attention to what this back wall now looks like. I'm going to zoom in on this edge. Notice here where the top will be cut and where the actual wall is. And if we scroll back here like this, we'll see that up in the front, it's one line, tight. Let's move over this way to this corner. Same effect. And again, we're going to zoom into this and show you what's happening there. Now, 
let's do this. Let's see if we can offset this line uh, back, uh, let's say, three-eighths of an inch or a half inch, and have the same effect on the back wall in case there's any imperfections in the drywall. I've zoomed in to, onto an area of the back wall where the two lines were as much separated as they could be. This is where the back wall scribe moves in and out, and it happens to be away from the red line. Actually, in this case, you can see how we have to offset it at least that much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset. Uh, I'm going to go as full as um, oh a quarter of an inch and see if that gets it. I'm going to offset this line to there. Very good. This is only a quarter inch here. So don't worry about it. Now I'm going to erase the back line. Now we will go back to the file and look at that. And we're going to go into the corner now and zoom and show you what that looks like in this corner. See what has happened here? We'll zoom one more time. Now we're going to fill it in this corner with a sharp fillet and show you that now we've created a situation here where we're less than the thickness of a splash. It'll go in real easy and uh, the splash will cover all that and it's all straight saw cuts. Now you'll notice out here um, when we zoom in that there is no dog ear here. Okay? Or here. Beautiful way to do that.